it's a pleasure to introduce Dr. Scott Baldwin, first, our first presenter. He practices in the field of surgical oncology, which includes the surgical management of complex cancers, including gastrointestinal, biliary, and skin cancer. We are very blessed to have partnered with Dr. Baldwin for more than six years in our melanoma cancer treatments. He's a valuable member of our cutaneous cancer committee and GI biliary cancer committees. And now I hand over the presentation to Dr. Scott Bowen. Uh, thank you, Sherry. Thank you for the great introduction here. Uh, as I said, I've been here at Kaiser for uh, six years and the majority of my practice is actually uh, focused on melanoma. So when patients are diagnosed with melanoma, they are usually referred by their primary care physician or the dermatologist, whoever first noticed the lesion and did the subsequent biopsy. At that point in time, they're then usually sent over to a surgeon, frequently myself, where we discuss the next steps in management. And while we've made really great strides in the treatment and diagnosis and uh, treatment of advanced melanoma over the past 10 years, the mainstay of treatment still remains surgical excision. So once the initial diagnosis is made, they're sent over for a surgeon for that discussion regarding the next steps in management and treatment. During this time, the patients usually have only been told that they have a diagnosis of melanoma. And they actually haven't been told what that really means in terms of their prognosis or what treatment needs to be done or how concerned even they should really be about this. And that discussion usually falls on me or the surgeon who's gonna be seeing them and treating them. The most important thing that we assess when we're first seeing a patient with a new diagnosis of melanoma is we had to figure out how concerned we really should be about this melanoma. And the best way we have to figure that out is by looking at the pathology report and seeing how deep the melanoma went into the skin. It doesn't necessarily matter really how long the melanoma has been there or what it really looked like. It's really the most important thing is how deep into the skin it went. The deeper it goes, the more dangerous it is to the patient. So once it's getting past that first layer of the skin, it's the epidermis, and if it gets past that level, then we start calling it actual melanoma. If it hasn't gotten through the epidermis, it's just melanoma in situ, which means in place, which means it hasn't gotten deep enough to get access to blood vessels or lymphatics, and it hasn't gotten the chance to spread. So as I was saying, the melanoma has to get past this first level of the skin here, the epidermis. And until it does that, it's not really melanoma. Once it starts getting deeper, it, then you have access to blood vessels and lymphatics. And that's when it starts causing an actual risk to the patient. And the deeper it goes, the more dangerous it actually is. So you can see based upon the depth of the melanoma, these numbers here represent the actual risk of recurrence and ultimate death from melanoma as the melanoma gets deeper. So once you're at very thin melanoma up to one millimeter, the risk is actually very minimal. As you approach up to that four millimeter mark, the risk becomes a lot more dangerous. The other thing that we look at is gonna be whether or not the melanoma has spread to lymph nodes. Once it's done that, it then becomes stage three disease. And obviously as you go higher up through the stages, the risk of recurrence and ultimate death from melanoma becomes a lot higher. We break uh, the stage of, down, of three down into three different categories. Now it's actually four. But once it's minimal disease, just detected microscopically, that's gonna be a 3A. As you start getting more and more lymph nodes involved and more and more disease burden throughout the lymph nodes, then you're gonna start advancing higher and higher through those stage three melanoma. And again, the risk of recurrence and ultimate death is gonna start going up more. Once it's spread out of lymph nodes into different parts of the body, that's when it becomes stage four disease. That's what a lot of our talk here for the rest of the day is really going to be focused on management of advanced melanoma. And I'm going to leave that to the rest of the speakers today. But melanoma is a little bit different from other cancers in that it really doesn't have a predilection for a particular spot in the body for which it can spread. It'll really go absolutely anywhere. It'll go to liver, lung, brain, even intestines, which most cancers don't do. So detecting a recurrence of melanoma can be a little bit more challenging than it would be for other kinds of cancers. Now that I've said that, it's really important to emphasize that most of the melanoma we see is early stage disease. It's localized just to the primary location where the melanoma started out. It hasn't spread to lymph nodes. It hasn't spread anywhere else in the body. So about 83% <clears throat> or even higher 
is actually early stage disease that's easily managed with simple excision and continued surveillance to make sure that there's no recurrence of melanoma. And we usually don't have to do any of these a lot more advanced therapies because it's able to be simply removed. Getting back to the survival goes back to, again to really the depth is still stage for stage, mark for mark. It's really the most important thing when we talk about melanoma. Less than one millimeter is a very low risk melanoma. It still has a chance of spreading. So we still do take it very seriously. But as you start going up through the depths of the melanoma, it really becomes a lot more dangerous. And you can see once it hits that four millimeter mark, the risk of death is about 50% or sometimes even higher depending upon some other risk factors. And if you compare that to the regional five-year survival at 68%, you can actually see that if you have a melanoma depth of over four millimeters, that's actually more dangerous than even having some very limited lymph node disease. So how do we actually treat melanoma? As I said, the mainstay is complete removal of the melanoma. And back in the day, what we used to do is be very, very aggressive with the surgical, ex surgical excision of melanoma, taking very, very aggressive margins, sometimes four centimeters around it or more. And you can see in the picture here that the margin starts with the radius going out from each edge. So if you have a one centimeter melanoma and you take a four centimeter margin, all of a sudden you're taking out 10 centimeter diameter circle of the skin. And that's exceptionally morbid, obviously, because there's no good way to pull the skin back together again. So before we figured out that we didn't need taking massive margins, we were doing a lot of skin grafting. These days, we don't have to do that anymore. We've discovered that doing no more than two centimeter margins is effective for virtually all melanomas. And for the thin melanomas, a one centimeter margin is more than adequate. And the risk of local recurrence or the melanoma recurring right where it started is actually very low. So what we do is we take our margin of skin, we measure out our appropriate margin, which is either one to two centimeters. And then we turn that into what we call an ellipse or an eyeball or a football. And because we can't turn a circle into a line and close that up, that's why we have to turn it into this ellipse, at which point in time we're able to turn it into a line and then close up the melanoma excision site. So this is an example of one of my patients who had a T3 melanoma. It was 2.1 millimeters deep. So that required us to take a two centimeter margin of excision from around there. This is what it looked like before. And this is after it's healed. There's a nice line. It's all been pulled back together and it's healed very nicely. And you can see in this picture actually that there is a second lesion that's already marked out. And this is a new melanoma that's completely unrelated to the original melanoma that developed after the original excision was done. So this is exceptionally an example of why it's exceptionally important for people to continue on with regular skin surveillance after their melanoma has been treated. Because once one melanoma has shown up, the risk of another melanoma appearing somewhere else in the body is increased. So the next thing we need to talk about is how do we assess whether or not melanoma has actually spread to a lymph node? And that's really one of the most important prognostic things after the depth of the melanoma that we really need to assess. And we do this in a variety of ways. The first thing is at the time of the original consultation, the lymph node exam is done to make sure that there aren't any lymph nodes that actually are palpable and feel suspicious. If there are, then we'd work that up and address that in an appropriate fashion. The vast majority of time though, we don't notice anything like that on exam, but we're still worried about the risk of having it spread, especially for those melanomas that are deeper than 0.8 millimeters. That's when the risk of the melanoma spreading to a lymph node becomes significant and measurable. And the risk of having it spread to a lymph node is actually higher than the risk of doing a procedure to remove a lymph node to assess that. And what that procedure is called is a sentinel lymph node biopsy. And you can basically kind of think of that as making a treasure map. So what we do is we inject some blue dye or some radioactive dye or both adjacent to the area where the melanoma was. And then we use that to make the treasure map. And that, lymph node, that uh, blue dye or radioactive material then drains through the lymph node and gets concentrated there. And then we are able to use basically a mini Geiger counter to identify where the radioactive tracer went to. And we presume that that lymph node is going to have the same 
higher risk of having melanoma spread to it if melanoma had spread to a lymph node. So we take that lymph node out, that thing gets sent on to pathology. And unfortunately, we are unable to get a diagnosis or a determination if melanoma has spread to that lymph node at that time. It takes a few days to do the proper processing and the proper staining to be able to identify if there's any microscopic areas of melanoma within that lymph node. And during that time, it, it can be a little bit stressful, but once we get the results back, we do go over them, and then that helps us to determine really what the final risk of having the melanoma recur is, and if it's stage three or more localized disease. This is just a little diagram showing where the lymph nodes really are in the body. And when we talk about lymph nodes spread from melanoma, that really goes to one of three different areas, depending upon where the melanoma actually started at was. So if it's on the head or neck, it'll usually drain to these lymph nodes here in the neck. If it's on the arm or the upper trunk, it'll go to lymph nodes in the axilla or the armpit. And if it's in the lower trunk or abdomen or in the legs, it'll usually go up here into the groin. What we used to do is if a sentinel lymph node was positive, we would then go and do a complete removal of all the lymph nodes in that area. So either the neck, the armpit, or in the groin. And that was a very aggressive operation because you're talking about removing not just the lymph nodes, but all the tissue around there and stripping everything out of that area. And that can lead to a lot of complications afterwards in terms of wound healing, function of the arm or the leg, and especially lymphedema, which is chronic swelling of the leg, where once because we moved out all the lymphatic tissue, that kind of creates a traffic jam, if you will. So that fluid that would normally drain back through the lymph nodes into the body, there's no good way for that fluid to get back now and that can lead to chronic swelling of the extremity. And there's two trials that I just wanna talk about real quick that really inform the current practice of surgery for melanoma and how we manage it and how we diagnose and really figure out what we really need to be doing. The first one was the multi-center selective lymphadenectomy trial one. And what they did here is they were trying to figure out is if doing a sentinel lymph node biopsy and then doing that completion node dissection I just described, does that actually make people live any longer? So this is a well done study. They took over 1600 patients and then they randomized them to either uh, just observing them or doing the sentinel lymph node biopsy. And if it's positive, doing a completion node dissection. Most of the patients here, over 1300 fell into that intermediate thickness group. So about one millimeter to three and a half millimeters. There were some other patients in this group with the thicker melanomas and the thinner melanomas, but the vast majority of patients had that intermediate thickness. And that's why we kind of make that recommendation to do these procedures for these intermediate thickness melanomas. And these are the results of the trial here. And I wanna draw your attention to kind of yeah, figure C and D here. As the lines go down, that represents more people having recurrences from melanoma. And we can see that there's an actual difference here between people who had sentinel lymph node biopsy and went on to have a completion removal of lymph nodes and people who did not have that procedure done at all and were just observed with physical, physical exam, seeing if they had a recurrence of lymph nodes. And you can see there's an actual real benefit to doing that procedure. But if you look up in A, this is actual people who died from melanoma. There's not really a measurable difference there. And what that does is that leads us into the follow-up trial, which would be MSLT2. And what they looked at here is if actually doing that completion node dissection actually had any measurable survival benefit. This was another well-done trial. They randomized 967 people to each arm where if they had a positive sentinel lymph node, they just underwent regular observation with ultrasound, not just physical exam, but good surveillance to make sure that if anything shows up, we catch it early, or what we used to do with the completion node dissection and taking everything out right then and there. And what we see here is that there really is absolutely no difference at all between those two groups. So we have really stopped doing and really gotten away from doing these very morbid completion node dissections. And if people have a positive sentinel lymph node where melanoma has gone to that one lymph node that we took out, we just observe them very, very carefully and very closely for years afterwards. You can see the follow-up here is for 10 years. So we really do that. And if we detect melanoma at that point in time, that's when we go ahead and do that operation. And we discovered that only about one in three people will need that operation. That means two in three 
are able to avoid that very morbid, very lengthy operation and do just as well if, than people who actually went ahead for that operation. And really one of the actual most important things is what do we do after the melanoma has been treated? For early melanoma, a regular physical exam for five years, taking a look at the lymph nodes, making sure that there's no recurrence, making sure no new symptoms are showing up. That's what's needed there. For intermediate melanoma, we do the same thing, but we do it for a longer period of time because that risk is a little bit higher. And make sure that we keep an eye on people for a little bit longer, just because there's still a risk of recurrence at that five to 10 year mark. For stage three melanoma, that's melanoma that's spread to the lymph nodes, just like I said a minute ago, we do those regular surveillance ultrasounds of the lymph nodes, making sure that nothing shows up. We continue with the regular physical exams. And if the risk of melanoma is high enough, we may even add regular uh, CT scans or PET CT scans to observe and detect any distant recurrence of disease somewhere else. And with that, I am gonna turn it uh, back over to Dr. Shu for the remainder of our talk here today. Hi, thank you, Dr. Baldwin. Thank you very much for your uh, very informative presentation. I do see that we have a few questions. Uh, um, he's Dr. Baldwin is also on call for the operating room and um, he may ha have to leave all of a sudden, but we'll try to save these questions for the end. Uh, there's a question and answer session and stick around for that. 